Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for part one of this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio 2 update where, well, stuff, progress has been made and resource problems have been found. But, well, let's start off with the, with the big headline for this week, shall we? The big thing I achieved this week is getting the Matter 1 science packs up and running and you can completely not see them at all here because we've run out of the catalogues being brought in over here. Um, we'll have a quick look at that in a moment. But the way this works is that we've got um, the standard sort of tra uh, railway station over here where we're unloading the, um, the, the catalogues and okay there's some green ones in there but that's a placeholder for later on when we get the, uh, the Matter 2 catalogues coming through. And also we've got the scrap coming in and all that, that's all being dumped into these warehouses and then passed along here. We've then got the same sort of belts coming along here that we've had for various other science packs. And over here, things are actually a little bit easier than they were with um, with the other ones, because there's only two tiers of matter science. Unlike, for example, biological, where there's four of them, or in energy, where the, no, this is material, but there's, there's four of them. So along here, we have to have um, a pair of belts coming in here with one tier one and two on, and putting in different, different um, intermediates, and then tier three and four coming along the bottom, and then being passed up as appropriate. With matter science, we've only got two of them, so they just go on on, on one belt. And both uh, tier, tier one and tier two of um, matter science require the same intermediate, namely the scrap. So that means we only need to have the two belts running along here. And I should probably potentially I could put in a, a belt in the middle of here to block off the um, the, the, the matter two catalogs from flowing all the way along to the matter one end. But the number that's going to be stockpiled along there, it's not going to be the end of the world. But I'll probably still do it out of a sort of an abundance of tidiness. So I could take out this piece of pipe here, put in a little bit, of, and put in an underground pipe, and then a splitter in there to just block them from going going any further along. But anyway, as you can see, these have now run out because we made a relatively small number of them. But as I say, I'll, I'll talk about that again in a moment. Um, the other, the other input that's needed, though. So for, for each of these, we've got for these ones down here, we've got um, we've, we've got uh, four different inputs. We've got the catalog, the insight, the significant data, and the intermediate of the appropriate uh, material. Um, and then up here, it, it, it's similar. We've got the catalog, we've got the scrap, which I'm calling the intermediate. We've got the significant data, but instead of the um, instead of the insights, we, we have to we have to produce particle stream, the pink clouds here. So that's made this a little bit more awkward because instead of being able to just pack the machines up against each other like I've done here, I've had to leave a little bit of a gap between them to make sure that nothing that we don't get any short circuiting pipes. And then over here, because the next stage requires a different fluid that's going to be a bit more complicated, I've had to leave a bigger gap because we're going to have a fluid being fed in on either side for matter two. But I'm not going to I'm going to try not to worry about matter two too much just yet. But at the moment, but I am aware that it's going to take more different inputs into it, so it's going to be a little bit harder to implement. And so this means we've started to be able to make them. Uh, yes, we've run out of the matter catalogues, but uh, we, we've, we've got the we've got the coolant, we've got the particle stream, we've got the significant data, we've got the scrap, and so this is producing the matter sciences and then a couple of junk outputs as well. So it's slightly awkward that there's two different junk outputs, but that does mean so along here I filtered out the junk outputs along the top by saying I just want the matter science pack one coming through here, and this is important because the um, as as usual. Matter Science 2 requires Matter Science 1 packs in order to make it, and so if you don't if you don't split them out earlier and get rid of the scrap and dispose of the scrap, then you end up with a point where this area fills up with all of the junk because you're not pulling the Matter 1s through fast enough over here, and so you use all, all of the available Matter 1 catalogues up from in this area and it just jams up with, with, the, with the junk. But if you take the junk out first, then it's just the Matter Science packs flowing through here and you can, and you can you know, grab them out as needed for the next tier of science. This is the same as I've done down here, except down here we've got a belt running across the top that has all the junk put onto it, and there's only the one type of junk data cards coming out of here. This doesn't produce broken data cards, and so there's a bit less complication in here. We can just say, yes, chuck all of the junk data cards out like that, that's fine, and let all of the science packs through, it doesn't matter. We, we let everything else through here, and it's just science packs. So that does work a little, that's a little bit easier. Whereas over here at the end, I've had to then put in separate filters for the science pack 1s and this will what is supposed to be science pack 2s but I can't filter the, to those yet because we've not researched them and so we need to have separate things over here to pull out the two different types of science pack and put them onto this belt here even though they will be on different sides of the belt up here just in order to make sure that both types of junk are filtered out properly over here now I suppose I could have put I, I could have put in the fil filters along here to say take out the um 
take out the two different types of junk and brought them out separately and then just had the one belt flow through have the belt flow straight through with the science packs on it but this felt slightly more fail safe just in case there's some other kind of junk that gets produced by this and I haven't and I've forgotten about it or I don't know I'm just being a bit overly uh, overly cautious I suppose and the slightly tricky thing about this was when I put together the uh, science system down here I'd forgotten or I, or rather I wasn't aware that we were going to have matter sciences as well so I put in all these belts across the bottom for the data cards that are being brought in and then all these ones across here uh, for the other sort of ba relatively basic science packs then the astro uh, energy material biological and then these two belts free uh, are reserved over here for deep space science because I knew we were going to need four of those as well and so I've had to squeeze in an extra belt down here but fortunately um, we're only using three of the different types of thermofluid and we've got room for five different pipes across here so I was able to run this belt down here it did also occur to me as I was doing this that I've also forgotten about advanced data cards. So there's a, yet there is another type of data card. However, conveniently, there is a gap on this belt here. So as long as I make the advanced data cards somewhere where they can be put onto this train and end up in, going, coming through here and be, be passed out and put onto this belt, then that'll be absolutely fine and they'll fit in with the system as designed. If there are any other tech cards or science packs that I wasn't aware of, then we're going to be in trouble. But for now, this is basically this, this should work quite nicely. And so, as I was saying earlier, I need to, need to get the um, the catalogs and the scrap over to here in order to be put out and put into the system to be used appropriately and sorted out and dealt with as as we need to make the science packs. And this works exactly as I was talking about in, in last week's video. So we've got um, the train comes down to here. This is where we're making the matter science in this this area at the bottom of energy science. They're being put. The catalogs are being put into a train here. So this train will go to a stop up here somewhere where it picks up as much scrap as it needs there's loads of it in that warehouse I showed you again I showed you that last week but I'll show you again in a moment then runs down here picks up all of the um, all the catalogs that are available and then once it's got enough of them it will then come up to wherever I am at the moment up here somewhere to drop them off so we've got scrap pickup fill up until you've got the appropriate amount of scrap that goes into the train which is 4,000 then go to matter catalog fill up until you're completely full and actually it's got really quite close to completely full then go over to matter catalog drop unload until you can't unload any more and then there's a bit and there's a bit of a pause and then go back around the loop again because we've clearly run out of one of the things it's carrying so if i say well it's pretty close enough to fall let's trigger it anyway bring it bring it over and the train will zip round through the factory and pull up over here, where, as, as, as always, as I was saying, we've got these unloading systems here. So it'll, it'll deal with the... Oh, okay, no, I take back what I said earlier. It doesn't actually have any of the uh, catalogs on. The amount of fullness it was showing that it had was the amount... Was, was just all of these, all of all the scrap that was in here. And the, the math catalogs down here were... Um, uh, we don't don't appear to have any of them at the moment, which is, is a shame because I wanted to show the machines working, but never mind. Uh, so yeah, the scrap will flow through here, and then when we get to ten thousand in the warehouse, it will it will then stop. Um, ten thousand seemed like an appropriate number. It's it's quite a lot, but you know at least this way it won't completely fill up the warehouse. There's no risk of having any problems with it, but it means we'll also all, should always have plenty of scrap available for turning into science. So yeah, now the train goes. Well, okay, I've unloaded completely. I might as well clear off and go and see if I can find any of those matter catalogs that you seem to you seem to want but um, aren't producing. And those are, in theory, being produced down here. So this, these are the machines that make the catalogs. You, you saw them last week. Um, but we've run out of some of the inputs for them. So there's a couple of card types up here that require the fiery date, fiery material data and the uh, pressure material data. And those are not being made because if we look over in the material area, there is a material shortage of iridium wherever that goes here iridium so um, Mike has a system on here where these these don't unload if there's less than 50 in the um in, in, in the warehouse. This runs down to 50 and then stops. I'm not quite sure why he does that. I think it's to balance between the two belts, but it seems a little bit unnecessary. But anyway, he's done, he's done that. So th there is 50 left in here, but we're not using those, and that's practically none. And there are some problems with the um with the supply of Iridium at the moment, which we'll take a look at a little bit later in this video. I've done a couple of other tinkering with research uh, researchers as well because there've been little little things that have been problematic. So, for example, over here, this is this is the um, material science area. So we're bringing in all of the catalogs from the area I just showed you. They're being dropped off here. They're being passed over in, into the into the machines over here, which are making them into material science packs. As you can see, they're tri trickling out over here at a, at a a reasonably healthy rate. We're um, and then we're using them to to investigate stronger explosive nine. Great. Uh, so that's basically working. The problem was that um, previously we had a row of machines along here that were still making all of the iridium intermediate, so the plates, the girders, 
the bearings and the composites, all from materials up here in Norbit. And that's not how we like to do things. We want to start making all of those, in fact we are making all of those on the ground, um, because that way you can use productivity modules and you get a bit of extra stuff free. So that's much, much better really. But this area up here hadn't been switched over to using that. So I've done that as well. The train that comes up to here is now dropping off all of those iridium things as well. So you can see we've got, got some belts in along here. It's not quite 100% finished yet because this still ha this warehouse still has an enormous quantity of uh, rare metals and heat shielding in it which is not ideal because, well, basically because they shouldn't be there. They, we, we, we don't need these anymore. These were for making the heavy composites, but since we're not doing that up here anymore, we don't need them here. This was a perfectly sensible solution originally when we were delivering all of the Iridium by, well, delivery cannon, and we weren't making the intermediates down on the ground. Having having these uh, these here brought up here by train made, made perfect sense. So I'm, not crit I'm actually not criticising Mike's designs for once. It's just that it needed to be brought up to the, the current state of the art. And so, I've, as usual, I've left in the machine that makes the the, uh, the plates because it's still better to transport stuff as ingots and you can't uh, productivity module that step. And so we're bringing the ingots out here round. It's a little bit of a long belt because I've, I've used belts that were already in there um, as, much as, as much as is reasonable. And they're being dropped off here. The girders are being brought over. We've run out of those, so those should be coming through and being brought along here to be made into the science pack twos. The bearings are coming across and we've run out of those as well to be made into science pack threes. And then the composites. Well, the composites, I thought I'd try and use up some of what was on the belt rather than just dumping all of this stuff into the logistics network. Uh, but we've not needed to do anything that's asked, that uses material four yet since I did that, so we haven't used up any of this um, any of this excess. Whether I want to actually carry on bringing it out here, well, it's a bit too late to do that now. We're not going to be bringing the, the, any more of this out out of here. This I am at some point going to program this inserter down here to dump all of the heat shield tiles and the rare metals into this purple chest which means the bots will take them away and but that's okay because they'll be dropped into this warehouse up here the yellow the only yellow warehouse in space and that means they'll then rattle down and they'll go so the heat shield tiles will end up in here they'll be passed out along here to be made into machines and um, and, and, and sca space scaffolding and so on the rare metals will rattle their way down to wherever it is rare metals go um, down here and then make their way out along this belt to be made into machines and whatever and again whatever else we use rare metals for so they will they will be put back into the system they'll be passed through and they will get used up eventually so we're not we're not just chucking them into chests of shame they're going to get used up but we're now going to start making the composites as well down on the ground um, well we are making them down on the ground we're going to be bringing them up and then we're going to be allowing them through on this uh, from from this belt here they'll be passed through probably through here probably along this belt in fact and then once this one's empty we'll just drop it down onto here and and, get, and, and put them onto this belt and then and then we'll have a nice healthy supply of everything we need. I've also sort of asked Mike to do the same thing over here because in this area he's been making the Iridium Intermediates in space as well. So we've got, we're making, um, we were making the girders over here uh, when, when we actually had, uh, when we had a supply of Iridium. Now the supply of Iridium has dried up and also I've broken the belt over here so it's going to stop making, they're going to stop make, being made here which is, as I say, is, is a good thing because we don't want to be making them in space but that does mean we don't now, we'll have to bring, we'll have to put in an extra train down here that's bringing those up, unloading them and then passing them up the, um, up the bus system over here and unloading them in the appropriate places. So there's a little bit of extra work to be done there. I was tempted to go in and do it myself but I know that Mike is a little bit um, a little bit precious about his uh, train systems over here and, and I think if I go in and start putting in stations along my designs rather than his designs he's probably going to get, get a little bit upset with me so I thought better to wait let him set it up however he wants and then we can go from there so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see it's quite possible that next week he won't have time and we'll just have I'll, I'll have to do it all myself anyway we shall see on a vaguely similar note, I noticed that the Astro Science down here had run out of beryllium, and that was unfortunate because it meant we weren't getting these beryllium plates through here, so that meant we weren't getting these um, uh, these telescope frames through here, which meant all of these telescopes had stopped, which meant basically all of the uh, production down here had ground to a halt, and every, every, there were there were problems everywhere because of it. But now I've been able to, I've gone in, I've fixed that, um, I, fi I fixed that supply of beryllium, and, and now everything's working. I think it's working correctly. Uh, we seem to have. Yes, we have enough of all four of the um, of the catalogs here, so so Astro Science is absolutely fine. But the problem was the reason that the reason this broke was because I didn't partly because I didn't have enough uh, big enough numbers set over here on not there here on the shopping list where we where we subtract the amount we want to have from the amount that's up here, and then if we get negative numbers, we send them down to the ground, and the ground will put put that stuff into trains, and the train will bring it up here. Um, the other problem was the train the train had loaded up with a load of stuff, but hadn't come because there wasn't enough in it. 
And so I've done, I've, I've implemented the system I was talking about last week again. And this is where we have, um, on this side, uh, connected directly to the warehouses, we have a uh, cons constant combinator with minus one of each of the things that should be stored in the system up here. And so this means if any of these get down to actually down to zero, then we'll have a minus one on the input to this um, uh, this combinator. As you can see over there, there is a minus one of the beryllium uh, scaffoldings. So we, we, we'll pass. So because of that, we then say if anything is less than zero, output one up arrow to say, hey, we need we need the train to come up now, please. Then over here, we pass through everything. So this this basically causes, puts in a break in the um, in the signal to make sure that the the massive negative numbers over here don't get passed back to this system because then these should these will often be negative because they're set, setting the things that need to be brought up. So uh, we might have and we we could have an, a relatively small negative amount of coal because there's minus. 8,000 on the coal there, but 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 it's still a positive number on this side. So this makes sure, sure that we can send this arrow down when there is when there is an actual when when something here has run out. And for some reason, the train hasn't gone from Norvis. So let's have a quick look at that. The train is not here. So apparently, it has gone. Oh, it's waiting at a downstream station because it's which one? Which one? Which one is it? It's this one. Okay, oh right, it's just come back down again, and it is unloading. So this has run into the problem that I've, I have admittedly criticised other people for having. Uh, so that's a little bit, little bit hypocritical of me. Um, it's run into the problem that there aren't any of these, these scaffolds coming through here, and so because there's nothing on here, the train comes in, it goes, okay, I've loaded as much as I can, oh, I'm getting a signal telling me to go back up again, uh, I'd better go, but it goes without any scaffolds. So we need, we need to sort that problem out. And that leads me on quite neatly to the next thing I want to talk about, which is over here, uh, where we're making those beryllium scaffolds, there is a shortage of the immersion plates coming in, so that we, we we're not able to make any beryllium scaffolds down here because there's a shortage of immersion plates. Now, this is actually because I've made a mistake. Uh, they, they were, it, because Mark has mostly sorted this problem out, but there should, actually, this signal shouldn't be there, it should be here. Uh, let's get rid of that one as well. Um, and that's because that means this because this this the train here is ready with all the immersion plates and it's trying to come in to drop them off. But unfortunately, this train is poking out beyond the signal because the signal's in the wrong place, and so that's causing issues with this train and meaning it's refusing to pass into here because it thinks it's going to crash into this one. And this has happened because there's a limit set on this warehouse when there shouldn't be. The limit should be set by the uh, over here by the station. So if we do that, this train will now empty. And I've solved. There were there were two problems here, and this will allow us to solve both of them. In fact, the signal doesn't need to be quite that far back. It could be here, like like it is on this one and this one, and then it would be okay. But this is something I'm going to need to fix because, as you can see, it's clearly clearly causing problems. Uh, why are you not running? You, oh, these are the wrong way. Ha, I see what's happened here. Take those out. They are completely the wrong way around. They should be like that. I think. Ooh, I can't see my arrows. Yeah, they're like that. So what 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 had happened there? Is that the, um, the 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 loaders have been put down with the the side that's supposed to go into the warehouse against the belts and the side that's supposed to go to the belts into the warehouse and that's not going to work. So, but that but that will that will that will fix it at least eventually once the uh, once the bots come out and and, and uh, put the put the loaders back in there. Anyway, there was a more significant problem with the uh, with the immersion than just what I've been talking about here, and that has been fixed on quite a sort of uh, quite quite a, a lot of depth, should we say? So let's go let's go over and have a look through this in order. So, Mark has developed this system, and this is for taking uh, taking in core chunks, immersite core chunks, and then turning them into immersion plates, as you can see, up, coming out coming out of the top up here. And this is using all of the latest modern equipment, which unfortunately still means the basic um, uh, pulverizers. But then we can feed it into high-end uh, chemical, advanced chemical plants and advanced furnaces, which means it's fewer machines, and they all run really quickly. And got uh, own. Oh, Bog standard electrolysis plants over here, and but anyway, this is this is now work. This is now working theoretically, as you can see. This is in the blueprint editor. So we've got a steady stream of the immersion plate coming out over here. Got lots and lots of rare metals going in, and then three belts of miscellaneous junk coming out. So all of that, all of these outputs, can just be fed straight into the spaceship because this is all stuff that we're happy to deal with at the other end. Um, the only weird one in here is the sulfur, but as you may remember from an earlier video, we are dealing with that. All of this can be just chucked into the spaceship and dealt with as appropriately at the. At the other end and it should I'm, I'm, I'm sure it'll work very very nicely because uh, mark is good at ratios and all that sort of stuff however 
Um, oh, oh, I was going to say this hasn't been placed yet. It has been placed. It's over here. Here it is over here. Um, but it hasn't actually been plumbed in yet. So it's been placed and built up, but you still need to feed in the inputs over here and the input of rare metal up here and then run off the, uh, the these belts to go over to the, the train system um, over here to ensure that we've got a steady supply of the immersion plates being brought out. Now, at the moment, we've got, we, we have we have a, a plentiful supply of them at, at least as of right now, because it looks like we've managed to push enough through the system to keep it satisfied. And I think a lot of the problems were related to the rare metals um, and, and just not bringing enough rare metal over in the spaceship. So if we have a look at Terra's orbit, we've got, a sp well, we have a spaceship that sometimes lands here and will deliver large quantities of rare metal and then take away all of the, the well, in this case, it's, there's some imosite crystals in here. There's a load of delivery cannon capsules for some reason. That's going to upset Tristan probably. Um, <laughs> and then all of the all of the miscellaneous junk that normally gets generated by, by all these sort of systems. Over in Norbit, the ship can land here. And as you can see, it's currently unloading um, a, 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 health, a nice healthy supply of the crystals. There's enough of the plates in here already. So the system seems to be working pretty nicely over here at the moment, um, but this is because some additional um, buffering has been put in. So there's a, uh, at the moment, as you can see, there's a steady stream of uh, rare metals going in here. And in order to make sure there's enough, I think there's a, a, yes, an additional buffer has been put in over here with this warehouse to make sure that we have a plentiful supply here. So when when the Terra spaceship comes in and says, I need. 100, I need 300 stacks of uh, rare metals or whatever it is it's asking for. It's some, it's some fairly obscene number. Um, let's see if we can tell down here. So at the moment it's asking for 37,000 more, uh, which is quite a lot. Um, so it'll be, yeah, it'll be asking, it means over here we can now have a stockpile of a, with a decent amount of rare metals in it so that when the ship comes in and asks for all of that, it's not waiting forever while a train shuffles it up with sort of a wagon, two wagons at a time because that will take forever. Ever. Uh, so as long as we've got this sort of built up in advance, we should be okay. And there is a request here, presumably, asking for, yeah, 40,000 rare metals. So that will be continuously being brought up by the train to top it up while the spaceship is away, so that when it arrives, there is a healthy supply available. In order to help that still further, down on Norvis, where the, where the train comes from for that, there is an additional buffer placed in the middle here that I'm trying to work out whether it's... It looks to me like this one is just purely for rare metal. So we've got an additional rare metal buffer in here, which we're feeding in with this green belt round here. And then everything else that needs to go up to that station is being passed through up this belt. Um, so this is this one. This one is getting all of the um, all the plastics, if sulfur if required, any ice, any glass, anything else that's needed up there is going to be brought up through this through the the other belt. But the rare metals have got their own special storage place here, and as you can see, this is gradually filling up because currently there's no train here. And then it means when a train does turn up, we can fill up at, at least twice the rate we normally, in fact, more than twice the rate we normally would, because this is going to fill up at at the rate of two green belts, whereas previously it would be filled up at the rate of a, a blue belt, or maybe even less than a blue belt, if, as as we see here, some of it has been taken away by another uh, something else on the on the um, on the bus along here. Uh, so this gives again another another little buffer along here. So when the train arrives, as it has now, you can see this this warehouse is emptying very very quickly into the into the trains. So we've got again we get that bit more throughput because. Like with the sulphur that goes out, with the sulphur for Agnea, there is so much required that it's very, very difficult to keep it flowing through in the sort of quantities we need. And so back over on Terras, yes, things seem to be uh, ticking over nicely. Mark has put in some additional core mining drills. There's one up there, that I'm sure that's a new one. That one's blooming miles away and has a ridiculously long belt flying, flying down from it. It looks like it's not quite finished, actually. Yeah, there's a bit, a bit of belt missing and possibly even an entire miner missing up there. Um, but that's because it looks like, yes, Mark is doing the uh, the good old trick of uh, leapfrogging out with uh, with roboports. Um, and so far, the roboports have only got... Oh, no, no, take it back. They have got to here. But there's no, oh I see there's no power so we need to put in a, a pylon maybe here or something something like that just to, just to power the, the mining drill up and then we'll have some flowing down there. So he says he's put in two or three more of those. He's also removed the uh, old core processing system uh, which was presumably in here um, and that was making all of the uh, all of the delivery cannon capsules because we don't need delivery cannon capsules anymore. All of everything from here is now being taken away by um, uh, by spaceships. So it can always be dumped straight onto the belts along here. Uh, so we're now we, now we just have pulverizers that are venting off the oil, uh, taking away all of the solids, and then the the oil and the pyroflux are being put into barrels over here. There's presumably a machine somewhere that's taking a little bit of the uh, the iron that goes through. Yes, here we go. A little bit of iron that's going to comes that comes out is being tapped off here to be turned into steel to be turned into barrels to allow this to be barreled up and there's oh yeah and then, then there's one greenhouse that's making the wood for the charcoal to make the steel as well so 
this system has been massively shrunk down, or minimally shrunk down. It's been made much, much smaller anyway, uh, compared to the system we used to have for making all of the um, the delivery cannon capsules. And this is probably worth doing on basically all of the planets, because it makes things a lot simpler. Uh, we don't need delivery cannons anywhere anymore, hopefully. So that'll allow us to, yeah, to... It, it removes a load of stuff, and it because everything is just being dumped straight into the spaceship. Much, much easier. After the Immersite and Immersium arrives in, in Norbit up here, it gets put into a train, as you've seen before, and that train will take it down to Norvis, where it stops down here, and then gets unloaded into this warehouse. And then we've got a pair of trains here for taking away the plates and the crystals. And it looks like we don't have quite as much as we would ideally like to have. These, these trains are not full, otherwise they'd probably have cleared off and gone to wherever it is that needs, needs more of it. But the system is, is basically working. And, the theory, and, and in theory, it, sh it should be sending a signal up to uh, Orbit saying what it needs. So if we look at here, we're saying if... Um, right, oh, here, here, and here is the train. It's just arrived. There must be a, a, a constant... Yeah, the constant combination down here saying we want to have 6,000 of one, 8,000 of the other. And if it, if it ever drops below minus 2,000, then that means we're running a bit low, so we'd like the train to come. Um, and the train will come down carrying both of them. It'll unload whatever's required by this system. And then, if necessary, it will come back up again. So this gives us a rather complicated set of instructions here, um, which I think is mostly mostly Tristan's doing. Although I um, I helped a little bit with uh, some of the, some of the easier bits. <laughs> so at the pickup end, so up in up in orbit, it will sit here until it's until any one of one of three things happens. Either it is full and there's been some inactivity, so it's it's completely filled up. It's it's got it got all the new batteries and things it needs. As you can see, there it, there it is filling up. Or it will fill up until it's got a full load of Immersite Crystal. There's been some inactivity again, so it's finished filling up with the plates as well, hopefully. And there is a ping from down the bottom saying it would like, saying downstairs would like some Immersite Crystal. Uh, so we've got that at the moment. At the moment, downstairs would like some Immersite Crystal. It's filling up, and then it'll be ready to go. Alternatively, we have the same with the Immersite plates. If it fills up to 3,000 and they're being requested and there's some inactivity, then the train will go, and then it'll drop down to Norvis and go to the, and go to the station down here. And down here, it will leave when it's completely empty, or when it's run out of crystals and it's inactive, or when it's run out of mercy and plate and it's inactive. Now, to be honest, we probably don't need this entry, this this one in the top, because if it's empty, then it has definitely run out of at least one of those two. So. I mean, it may, it'll save a second having that in there, but this makes it a little bit easier to understand what's going on. And so with the signals coming up from the ground, we can tell it to only come down to the bottom when it's got some, when it's got some of what it needs and there's a reason to go down. So we could set up that beryllium train that I was talking about before, the one that was, bringing, that was running endlessly without any um, beryllium scaffolds. We could use a similar system for that one, saying if you don't have any of the beryllium scaffolds, then there's no, and, and, and that's what you're trying to take up, then there's no point in going. But it's a bit more complicated to set the trains up like that, so we haven't bothered even though it's technically slightly better. <laughs> Notably, Tristan has fixed the spelling of Immersite on at least one of the stations around somewhere down here on Norv Norvis. And I think it might have been my Immersite plate drop over here. Maybe I spelt Immersite with two M's or something like that. I'm not sure. But either way, anyway, he's fixed that for me, which is very nice of him. I also fixed the station up in Module City that was ki kidnapping the Immersite Crystal State train, so that's no longer getting stolen here. It wasn't the usual problem of there being a restriction set on the um, on, on the warehouse up here. What happened here is one of the cables was missing over here, which is an even sillier problem to have. And finally, on the Immersite front, I ran a belt from the drop off Immersite drop off Immersion Plate drop off station here, all the way across here and down, 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 to allow it to feed the, the miscellaneous bus space bus train here. And another one, I put in a station down here for the Immersion Crystals, Immersite Crystals, whatever they're called, to be they're, they're for them to be brought over here and also to be put onto the space bus. So no, these are now being taken up to the to the space bus on on the space bus train, exactly as you you would expect from what I was just saying. I guess that makes sort of sort of sort of, sort of makes sense. Um, <laughs> and this is because we'd run out of Immersion plate up there because it was previously being brought in by delivery cannon, but delivery cannons are now old tech when we're trying not to use them anymore. And so, because we're bringing these Immersion plates through, we can start making very very important things again, like wide area beacons. And yeah, that's kind of kind of useful. So the next thing to talk about is over here on Mike's uh, Iridium planet of Kothar. And down here on the ground, Mike has been uh, having some problems in the past with the rate that the uh, the Iridium comes in at on by, by train over here. Uh, it, it turns out that because Irid Iridium doesn't really stack very well, I think I believe it stacks up to about 10. Like that, you see. So the train pulls in and it unloads and in almost no time at all, the train is completely empty like that. And this is a tiny amount of iridium, or rather iridite, that has come out here and been pouring through. And so 
this has been causing him all kinds of problems because even chucking a train in and then setting sending off and bringing the next one in almost immediately afterwards has not been bringing enough iridite in, in for him to for him to process it at the rate we need we need the iridium at at the other end. And so here's another one, but it's just it's, even when there were more trains doing that, that it it just wasn't enough. And so he has outsourced the uh, the crushing a little bit to the mine area. So up here we can see that here we, here we have the iridite mine running away merrily, digging up all the iridite, and then instead of just chucking it straight into a train as he was doing before, he's now pulverizing it on site. Uh, it looks like he's not quite finished building this, but basically it's being pulverized on site and then dumped out into a warehouse so the train can come out and pick up pre-crushed iridite. And that's fantastic for a couple of reasons. The first one is that if we look in this warehouse, you can see this stacks up to 40. So each one of these, there's, there's four times as much, four times as many items in each stack, and that's a big improvement. The other improvement is if we look at the machine over here, we can see that one iridite turns into, well, 40% iridite, which just hasn't been crushed, and 30% crushed iridite. So in a way, we could say that you've used up 60% uh, of the iridite that goes in in order to make 30% chance of crushed iridite. So in a way, you could say that's turning two iridite into one crushed iridite. I think that I think the maths there is correct. Um, and so this is even better. So e each of these each of these stacks of 40 represents 80 iridite. So it's it's um, so it's eight times you're getting eight times as much into your train by just simply crushing it on site here. Uh, and it's not quite as simple as that because we do have the productivity bonus in there of uh, plus 32%. So whilst he's gaining eight to 800%, well, gaining 700%, he is losing 32%. And I'm not going to do the maths for that, but it's not, so it's not quite as good as it sounds, um, but it is still very, it is still much, much, much better. The slight downside is that this means he is producing sand here as well. And so there are two possible ways this could be dealt with. What the, personally, I'd probably have just chucked it all in the same train and then sorted it out at the other end because I've got fairly used to making sushi trains by this point. However, uh, Mike has decided to put it into uh, down these belts that run up to here and have an alternative place for storing it. So he's got 125 stacks of sand in here. Once this gets up to 160, it'll call for a sand train. The sand train will come bimbling over. It'll grab the sand ta and take it away, and that can be transported separately and chucked into the into the system because I think it's needed somewhere somewhere around here. And so this means that then the train brings the uh, brings the crushed iridite down and then we'll drop it off here but unfortunately his trains run out of fuel. But in theory in theory the train would pull in here, it would drop off all the crushed iridite, it would go to, go through here and it would allow him to produce the uh, iridium much in, in much much larger quantities because he suddenly he's got rid of the biggest bottleneck of, of, of the of the whole system. And if this is and once this is expanded out to the the other mines around, then this will allow uh, this 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 will allow the the throughput to be massively massively increased. And if we have a look at the uh, the graph, let's see if it's let's see if it's noticeable. Right, looking at the um, the iridium ingot production over the last 10 hours, you can see it was, it was bimbling along here, about 220. And I think this is what it was like before he touched it, before he started doing things. Uh, then it got broken temporarily while he was upgrading it. That's fine, that always that always tends to happen. Then there was this massive spike, up to 386 per uh, per minute. Um, and I, I would like to say that's about the that's where it would be if the system was still working. However, unfortunately, the system is not still working. If that train ran out of fuel, so this has dropped all the way down to 126. So actually, despite all his efforts, it's become worse. But hopefully, once the train is refueled and things start to work a bit more nicely, it'll it'll, it'll all start working and uh, it will and, and things will be things will be much much nicer. So there's a little bit of fixing required in here. But as a sort of a step in the right direction, I think this is very good and will hopefully lead us to a lead to a, a sorting out the iridium problem once and for all, or at least until we put in a new science pack that requires even more of it or something equally ridiculous. Looking around a bit, I don't think he's put in the drop-off station for the sand yet, because he was talking about feeding it directly into this warehouse, which, you know, makes sense. Nice, easy way to get rid of it all. He can put in another station down here and then run some belts up across here, perhaps. That's, that, that, that's fine. He, it'll be a nice, easy fix. And he's not producing that much sand, so I suspect he's still going to need to make some of it from the uh, from the stone over here, as he's doing at the moment. But, you know, I guess we'll see as, as things go on. Um, the system is generally... The, the, the idea is good. It just has a few, um, a few little bits to finish off, should we say. And and so I have now been t definitely talking for long enough, so I think I'm going I'm to cut the episode here. There's still plenty to talk about in the other videos, including some fairly explosive updates for you, so I hope you'll come back on uh, on Monday for that one, and then on Tuesday for the uh, as well for the XCOM stream, 7.30pm UK time. Things are going things are going definitely in the XCOM stream. I, I had a, a big plot mission last week, and I'm going to probably do an, at least one more uh, this week. We're now down to only one of the chosen left as well, so that's quite satisfying. 
And then on Thursday we'll be carrying on with the uh, Factorio uh, sort of stream as well, carrying on with all of the stuff you've seen up here um, and trying to make all of this work properly. There was also a video that came out yesterday for supporters, so that's going to be coming out next week for non-supporters. Uh, keep an eye out for that one. It's going to be the second half of the sort of the the, uh, the weird gra the, the graphs video that I released a, a few weeks back. So I think that should should have some interesting um, and rather different ideas in it, and uh, hopefully you'll find those entertaining and interesting. And you can let me know if you, if you fancy trying any of them yourself. So, until then, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed everything. Please subscribe to the channel and uh, come along to everything else that's going on around here. Thanks for watching, see you next time, and bye-bye.